What's up guys, welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you how to create an Instagram carousel template in Adobe Illustrator. You can also download a free pre-made template file for this lesson from the description below. So now I'll pass you over to Rory, who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into Illustrator, we have the template file that you are welcome to download from the link in the description below. And this is what we are going to recreate from scratch today. So to begin with, I'm going to jump onto my web browser and we have a website up called socialsizes.io. And this is basically just a website that details all of the optimal image sizes for all of the major social media platforms. So you can see we have Instagram here. I'm going to click on this and if we scroll down you can see that we get some size options here and as you can see for any kind of feed images they are recommending 1200 by 1200 pixels so that's what we're going to use for this template so jumping back into illustrator now i'm going to start by going up to file and new and we want to select the web preset from the top just to ensure that this is using pixels and is set up in the rgb color space which is what we want for any kind of digital output so over on the right hand side, this is where I'm going to plug in our dimensions of 1200 by 1200 and I can go ahead and click create. So we've got a single artboard set up. So this is the equivalent of one slide of our carousel. First thing I'm going to do is just turn off pixel grid snapping by clicking this icon in the top right hand corner and be sure to save your document as well. Okay, so now that we've set up and saved the document, we are going to start by creating some layers over on the right hand side. So the first thing I like to do is create a layer for my guides. Now guides come in very handy when we are doing something like this because they can help us achieve consistent spacing on each slide in this example. Next I'm going to add a background layer. Now I'm going to add a layer for the core content of the slide so I'm just going to call this text slash design and you can name these whatever you want but this is the format that works for me. And lastly I'm going to add one more layer and name this this slide elements. So this is a layer specifically for elements that are going to feature on each slide. Now I'm just going to slightly rearrange this and put the guides layer to the top. And the first thing I'm going to do is create our guides. So we're just dealing with one artboard at the moment, but we'll show you how to easily apply things to multiple artboards in just a moment. So the first thing I want to do is enable my rulers. If you don't have them enabled already, you can go up to view and then down to where we have ruler and then show rulers or the keyboard shortcut is command R or control R on a PC and you can see we get some rulers appearing across the top and left hand side of our workspace. So to add a guide all I need to do is click and drag from one of these rulers in this case it's going to be a horizontal guide from the top or we can drag out a vertical guide from the left hand side and with these dragged out I can click and drag to reposition them. If you can't for any reason that's probably because they're locked. We we can unlock guides by going up to view down to guides and then there's an option to lock guides in my case or if they're locked for you this will say unlock guides so you can click that and then you should be able to move them around now to get some consistent spacing around the edges of this slide or to add some margins in this case all I'm going to do is just grab my rectangle tool and from the top left hand corner making sure that my smart guides are snapping to that corner I'm just going to click and hold shift to drag out a perfect square and I'm just really eyeballing this. I'm not going for anything too specific, just so that we've got some consistent spacing around the edges of our slides. And the next thing I'm going to do is holding Option or Alt on a PC, just click and drag a duplicate square out to the bottom right hand corner. Now what we can do with these guides is actually snap them to these squares. So with this vertical slide here, I'm just dragging along and waiting for my smart guides to snap to the right edge of this top left square. And I'll do the same with the horizontal guide here. And now I need to just drag out two more for the other sides of the slide. Now when I first click and drag out a guide, you can see my smart guides aren't going to snap to the square. So I need to let go for first and then click and drag again and now it is snapping. So I'll do the same with our last guide here. Let go and wait for it to snap. Okay, so we have our guide set up on this first slide here. Now what I'm going to do is create a few more slides. Now I'm just going to 
create four slides in this case, but you can obviously create as many as you want. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the left hand side and select the artboard tool, which is shift O on the keyboard. You can see that's selecting our artboard here. Now one thing to pay attention to is the number in the top left hand corner of this artboard. Basically every time we duplicate this, this number will go up and this will become relevant later on when we go to export these. So I'm just again holding Option or Alt on a PC and clicking and dragging to create a duplicate artboard. I'm going to hold Shift as well to lock it to this horizontal plane and I want to snap this to the right edge of our original artboard so that they're sitting next to one another and I'll do this another two times again holding the same buttons until we've got four slides here and this is the basis of our carousel setup. Now the only issue issue here is that we only have vertical guides on our first artboard. Now luckily it's very easy to duplicate these across. All I need to do is with my selection tool click and drag across both of these guides. You'll see they change colour to denote that they're selected. I'm going to press command X to cut them away and then if I go up to edit we have an option in here that says paste on all artboards and you can see the shortcut there is shift option command and V or that will be shift control Alt and V on a PC. So I'm just going to press them now. Shift, Option, Command and V and you can see that's applying these guides to all four artboards. Now the reason I cut these first two away is because if I just copied them it would essentially be pasting another copy of these guides over the ones I already have. So this is just to avoid creating duplicates in this case. So what I can do now is go over to my guides layer and just lock this layer instead of going via view and guides and lock guides. By locking the layer I can no longer click and drag and move these guides around by accident. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my background layer and just add in a background colour. Now this is the beauty of setting up a template like this in Illustrator. I can grab my rectangle tool for example and I'm just going to create a big rectangle from the top left of our first slide artboard all the way to the bottom right of our last artboard and I could do something like apply a gradient to this so I'll double click on my gradient tool and we can create something a little bit more unique that's going to flow from one slide to another. In this case I'm just going to keep this very black and white and this is because this is for you to go and customize to your liking so you can apply your own brand colors and styling to suit your needs but for this this is just going to be a basic template for you to customize. We can also do things like place elements between slides so that we have some continuity going from one slide to another. So I may just grab my ellipse tool in this case and I'm just going to apply a slightly lighter gray to this. And we can be quite flexible with this. I'm just going to drag out some circles that sit between slides in this example. And this can just be a nice technique to use to try and lead the audience from one slide to another. So we'll go with something like that. And you don't have to worry that these circles are sitting outside of these artboards because when we go to export they are going to be cropped anyway. So next I'm just going to lock that background layer and I'm going to move up to my slide elements layer and this is where we're just going to add some consistent details that are going to apply to each slide. So next I'm just going to grab my type tool and just clicking within this first slide I'm going to first change the color to white so that it contrasts against the dark background. We'll bump up the text size as well. We'll go with about 20 point for this example. Now I'm going to select a different typeface so I'm just going to use this typeface called blue highway now if you want to use this same typeface and it's the one that we've used in our template file you can download it for free from font spring and we'll have a link for this in the description below going back to our design now I'm just going to add a few details that we can use on each slide so this can be really any kind of information relating to the company so in this case I'm going to put a copyright 2020 in the top left hand corner now for anyone that doesn't know how to add a copyright symbol we can do this easily in Illustrator by going up to type insert special character symbols and copyright symbol and you can see that's been added and I'm just going to type 2020 after it and this is where our guides come in handy I can now simply position this in the top left hand corner using our guides to align it perfectly holding option I'm going to click and drag a duplicate out I'm going to right align this one and with our type tool just T on the keyboard to enable it I'm going to double click into here and on this top right hand corner I'm going to put a slide number in this case I'm going to do one with a forward slash and then a four to denote that this is slide
slide one of four. Lastly, again holding option, I'm going to duplicate our 2020 text and I'm just going to put the company name in this example. So just Graphic Designer Pro. But again, this is something that you can customize to your needs. And lastly, in the bottom right hand corner, I'm just going to put an arrow. And this again is just another graphic element that we can use to try and get the user to scroll. And it's going to add some balance to this overall design. We'll add a white stroke to this just to keep this consistent. And I'll maybe make this two point in this example. If I click on the word stroke, we'll get our stroke options. And under arrowheads with the second drop down here, I'm just going to choose one of these default arrowheads we have at our disposal in Illustrator. And again, just position this in the bottom right using our guides here. And if I turn off my guides now, you'll get a better idea of how this is looking. So because the other layers are locked, I can just click and drag over these elements. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the guides. Press Command X or Control X on a PC and then Shift Option Command V to paste these on all of the slides. So if I scroll across, you can see these are being applied to all of them. The only things I'll have to change in this example are the slide numbers. So I'll just double click into here with my type tool and make sure that these are all correct responding to the slide they're on. And then on this last slide, instead of having an arrow, we could put a message instead or just have nothing. In this case, I'm just going to copy this graphic designer pro text. Again, I'll make sure this is right aligned. Turn my guides layer back on. And if I zoom in, we'll just position this in that bottom right hand corner. And you could say something like leave a like. What I'll do is make this stand out a little bit more. So I'll go into my character options and make sure this is slightly bigger. So lastly, with this layer, I'm also going to add a line that just runs through each slide as well. Again, just reinforcing that this is a carousel that we can swipe through. So again, just grabbing my line tool here, I'm going to go from the top left using the guide sitting just underneath the text we have here and I'm just going to click and drag across until we get to the last slide. I'll hold shift to lock this to a horizontal plane and just align this with that right hand guide. And now I can add some stroke to this. So I'll just add a two point white stroke. Again, I can go into my stroke options and we could add some arrowheads. In this case, I'm just going to opt for a circular arrowhead at each end. And we could even do something like a dashed line if I check that. So again, turning off my guides layer, we'll get a better idea of how this is looking. And I would say this is just about ready for some content now. So again, I can lock this slide elements layer and we can move down to our text and design layer, turn my guides back on, and this is where we can just start adding our content. Now, this is obviously completely dependent on what you are going to be posting about, but it's always a good idea to start with a large heading of some kind if you're going to be creating carousel content. So I'm just going to put in some placeholder text. So make sure this is formatted in a way that it really stands out. So again, we're going going to use the bold variant of this typeface and I'm going to make this text much bigger. I'll hold option and click out a duplicate and we can create some subheading text as well. I'll go for the regular variant just to create some contrast and make this much smaller as well. With my type tool, I'm going to add a text box. Instead of just clicking once, I'm actually going to click and drag using my guides again to align to. If I let go, that's going to automatically paste in some text, but what I'll do is format this to be much smaller. And what I can do in this text box is just delete this text now and go up to type and fill with placeholder text. And that's just going to fill this up. Again, this is just a placeholder, so it doesn't really matter that this is just dummy text. I could equally go into paragraph and turn off hyphenate as well. And that's going to stop any words breaking over multiple lines. And with this, again, I'm just going to copy this and we can paste this onto the other artboards here. Now, if you want to paste the same content on another artboard in the exact same place, we can also do that by clicking on the artboard itself. You can go up to edit and you can see we have an option that just says paste in place. And the shortcut for that is just shift command V or shift control V on a PC. And if I press those buttons, it's going to just paste on this artboard the same content that we've copied. So I'm just going to move this content down slightly. We'll go over to our 
our last slide, click on that and just use the same shortcut. And that's really it. The last thing I would do is just make sure that things like these circles aren't sitting too close to the edges of anything. So in this example, we have this graphic designer pro text down here and the circle isn't quite sitting well against that. So all I'm doing in this case is just slightly enlarging this to create a slightly nicer look and we're ready to export this. So because we've set up each of these slides on their own artboard, this means that it's very easy to export them to individual images. All we need to do is go up to File, Export and Export As. You can select your destination, I'm just going to use these settings and I would recommend sticking with either a PNG format or you could go with JPEG as long as you're keeping the quality to maximum you're going to get some good results. You'll also notice we have an option down here that says use artboards. Now this is why I was telling you to pay attention to the numbers associated with each artboard. If you have multiple sets of carousels within your file you can actually specify a range of artboards to export. In this case though I'm just going to stick with all and then click export. We can leave the resolution as 72 pixels per inch as that's the most commonly used resolution for digital output and click OK. And now we're in the folder that we've exported these to. If I preview these, you can see that the circles have been cropped and we're just left with our four images ready to upload to Instagram. So it's very easy to set this template up and hopefully very easy to customize for your own posts. So there you have it. You'll hopefully now have a great base template that you can manipulate and customize for your own Instagram posts. We'd love to see what you create with this tutorial, so be sure to connect with us on Instagram and use the hashtag GDPro on the post you create with your own templates. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how to achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.